Okay, good. So I sent something, I sent four copy ads across to Shisimdi. I don't know if every one of you got the copy ads. I'm sure those who are in the group will have gotten it. I give specific instructions also that you guys should copy them out and not have them on your phone because we will be looking at them. We'll be looking at them tonight because I like to teach experientially and I don't just want to give theory we are ready. stuff. Okay, so if you guys copy them out, let's let's go. Okay, so I hope yesterday's session was good. Um, got some quite good feedback from people from TCMD also about um, the awesomeness of yesterday. So I'm, I'm glad that you had, we all had a good time. And today is day two and I'm, I'll be wrapping up today. Okay, so um, let's look at copy ad number one. All right, so let's look at copy ad number one because I sent those copy ads, copy ad one, copy ad two, three and four. So let's look at copy ad number one. Um, I want us to look at the opening sentence. The opening sentence of copy ad number one. Can someone type out the sentence? I just want to, I want us to participate. I want the class to be participating, right? So can you type out, if you have your copy, if you have those um, copies I sent, type out the first sentence of copy ad number one. Fantastic. Somebody's found it. <laughs> Who did that to this girl Namut in her cell phone? Why should be removing people? Okay, so Victor Atama, good. It shows that you are here. Jumoke, fantastic. So yesterday, I was on a condolence visit to the house of my university classmates till 11.30 p.m. before I went home. Now, when you want to start out writing a good copy, your very first sentence is critically important. The very first sentence of your copy ad is important. Very, very important. So if you look at this this particular copy ad, I started with a story. I started with a story. So starting up your copy ad with a story. Remember I said yesterday that if you draw from your own personal experiences, people tend to connect a whole lot better. So I started out this copy ad with a personal story and it actually happened it was not concocted it was happened it happened actually and i started out with yesterday i was in a condolence visit to the house of my university classmate now this story a story of me relating about school and school is something that people easily relate to remember yesterday we talked about relatability school is something that people really relate to because a lot of us have gone to school whether primary school or secondary school or university so I started out with this story and I started out with that particular um, sentence. This particular sentence had to do with what I call mobility, right? It has to do with death. Now, death is something that everybody relates to. That is something when you hear it, you want to understand, you want to know who died, who didn't die. That was why I started out with that sentence. Now, you need to realize that when you're starting out your copy ad with a sentence, you need to be able to hold, your starting sentence has to hold the attention of your reader. The starting sentence has to hold the attention of the reader. It has to be relatable. It has to be relatable. So you're starting your heading. We are going to talk about heading in when I, when I go to copy at two and copy at three. Your heading is critically important. Your very first sentence when you have to start with because people are inundated every day with lots of stuff. You're scrolling down on Facebook, you're scrolling down on Instagram, lots and lots of feeds, lots and lots of stuff on the feed. If your first sentence doesn't catch attention, you may lose it with your copy ad. So for me, most times when I want to start out writing copies, I spend good time planning my very first sentence. I spend a good chunk of time planning my very first sentence. That's how it's be. It's me because I know that that very first sentence is what is going to hold people and make them want to pay attention. So hold, you have to be able to hold attention. It has to be relatable, something that people can relate to. So in this starting, con uh, this starting first sentence of mine, I started talking about condolence. And then I in the sentence, we talk about my university classmate. That has to do with schools, something that people have to relate to. 
Now, when it has to do, if you read that particular story, I want to tell you a few elements when it has to do with the writing stories. Number one is that your story has to be simple. I shared it yesterday also. Simplicity is critically important. Number one element when you want to write a story is your story has to be simple. Your story has to have colorful descriptions. So if you read that copy ad, you find out that it was very, my opening story was very simple, right? My opening story was, was very simple and um, had very colorful descriptions. So I had good description of what it is I was talking about. The third element, which I, I usually say, there are three elements I want to talk about. The first element is simplicity. The second element is colorfully describing the event. And thirdly, vulnerability with detailing. So you have to be very vulnerable with the details of the event. Don't make it very sketchy and make people want to start to think too much. Make them flow with the, with the narrative of the event. Make them flow with the description of the event so that they are tuned in and they are connecting to you okay so simplicity you have to be simple you have to make the descriptions to be colorful and uh, when it comes to colorful descriptions i know that many of you i don't know if any or if many of you read literature but you find out that for those of us who read literature there's what we call figures of speech we have metaphor we have similar we have oxymoron we have irony we have uh, metonymy there are lots of them parabole is there we have alliteration we have repetition I don't know many of you if you if you guys you know study literature right but most times for those of us who didn't really go to um, study literature um the frequent speech that we are usually used to are metaphor similar you know metaphor when you say something like he kicked the bucket he kicked the bucket is a metaphorical expression um that shows that somebody has died right um he is he smiles like a little baby that is similar he smiles like or as a little baby that's um, similar so we're usually used to irony and metaphor sorry irony and metaphor and similar you know for all those other ones a lot of individuals don't really know all those other ones that are alliteration and hyperbole and all those other ones right but these three elements suffice enough i mean these three figures of speech suffice enough to make your your story to be colorful colorful descriptions of your personification fantastic so um and debaki, yes, personification is something that people also use um, in terms of putting, imputing human elements into something that is not human, okay? Uh, making something that is not human to um, to sound like as if it's sarcasm. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. You guys really, really, you are, you are intelligent people. I like that, okay? So simplicity, colorful descriptions, and vulnerability with your, with your detailing. You have to be vulnerable to the point that you release details. People who read me on Facebook, some of time, sometimes they, they get scared reading me because I'm very detailed in my description to the point that you'd be wondering, this guy is just sharing everything about his life. Does he not have secrets? I still do have secrets, but I want to be vulnerable to the point that he, the, those who are reading me are like, oh, this guy is a human being. He understands me. He connects to me. If I make it so um, wishy-washy, then I am not really delving to the to, to, to into the hearts of people. That's how it is. That that point in their lives, that that connection, we need it. Immediately you can connect to that depth, that, 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 that depth of vulnerability in every one of us. People want to pay attention to you. Now, if you read that copy ad, if it's in your hands, if you write it out somewhere with your pen and paper, you read that story, you see how I started that story, how I visited my, my former classmates and what we are doing and all of that. Now, there's a, there's a technique that I want to teach you um, someone once told me why I share everything about myself. Okay, but I learned that. Okay, at the back, yeah, it's good, right? Um, you see, uh, Jumoke, you see what you said? Honestly, I never know there will be a sales at the end of the story. That's the thing. That's, that is copywriting. People don't need to know that you're going to sell something to them at the end of the day. The moment they know that you're going to sell something at the end of the day, you're no longer writing copy. That's the truth. They will immediately begin to have this... Um, if they know at the beginning that you want to sell something to them, then they will immediately begin to have this objection. They will begin to raise walls, all right? They will begin to like, mm, this guy want to sell to me. Mm, no, 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 no. But when you start, say you can't hear me. You can't hear me, guys. They're like saying that you can't hear me. Is that true? Can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Oh, fantastic. Maybe, yeah. Stella, I don't know. Okay. Maybe you can, you can refresh your stuff. Oh, 
Okay, good. I'm back now. Okay, that's fine. Maybe a temporary glitch over there. All right. So the moment that people can easily identify that you're writing a copy and you want to sell something to them at the end of the day, at the end of that means you really didn't write a copy. That's the truth. They have to flow with you. They have to like, it's like you guys are swimming together in the river together. You're swimming together in the river, right? Without really knowing where you're going until you get to the very end. So we say, Jumoke, honestly, I never knew there would be a sales at the end of the story. Now, in that, if you go to paragraph five, you have you have, you have um, read the story. If you go to paragraph five, I hope you guys can understand how to count paragraphs. If you go to paragraph five, you will find a technique in copywriting that is called suspense switch. In paragraph five, that's where I began to switch away from my story into the actual thing that I want to sell to you. It is called suspense switch. I mean, the videos call it other things. They can call it whatever it is I want to call it. But for me, it is suspense switch. If you go to paragraph five, paragraph five starts to talk about how one of them, how one of my classmates began to say that I could easily package everything that they were saying into an ebook. E that is where the suspense switch started out. All right. Yeah. So he said, why we laughed and joked. One of them said, Prof Nobis, I know now that you package all these things that we're seeing now into a book and sell it now your way. That is where I started out my suspense switch. And if you notice that after that paragraph, I began to talk about the real thing that I wanted to sell to you. But remember that your story that you're starting out with does not have to disconnect with what it is that you're going to sell. If your story starts out and it disconnects from the from from towards the to, if it disconnects um, at the point where you're doing your suspense switch, then it doesn't make sense. All right. So I'm switching from that story and then I'm switching into the actual purpose for the copy that you're writing. That is a suspense switch. And then you begin to read towards it, read, 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 read. You see the benefits and everything, and then you get towards the end, and then I've made an offer to you. That is what it is. That's how good copywriting is. Right, that's about copywriting one, copy ad one. Now the copy ad two, I want you guys, you have read copy ad two, all right? I want you to answer me. What did you observe about the copy ad number two? What did you observe? I have my copy here, but I want you to tell me what did you observe about copy ad two? Your observations about copy ad two. I want to see in the comment sections, your copy ad two, what did you observe? I want this class to be very, very, um, from this, the beginning sentence of copy ad two, what did you think about the beginning of copy ad two? That very first sentence, your child can be the next Zuckerberg. What do you think? Because I did this, I did this copy for parents. Um, I wrote this copy um to advertise a training program by a tech company a tech company that is trying to raise kids 1000 kids that will be the next mark zuckerberg what do you think about the copy fantastic i'm seeing copies Yeah, I'm expecting. Okay, I'm seeing now it addresses the problem, then talked about the results before the solution. Fantastic. So you see, Jumoke, sorry, um, who wrote that? Yeah, Uche. You can see that it addresses the problem, then talks about the results before the solution. Remember the yesterday I talked about that people will love you, people will trust you, and the people want to part with their money. Now, by talking about the problem, the individual begins to understand that you really know what you're talking about, that these people who are providing, this, who are doing this training really know what they are talking about. Then they will talk about the, when you, are, when you now talk about the results, right? When you talk about the results, then they begin to trust you. And then they get to the point that you have seen this, they have now seen that the solution is attending that training, then they will bring out their money to pay. Now, T.Y. said, address the pain points. No story. There was no story there. I didn't use a story for that copy ad. It was straight down using um, statistics and everything. All right. 
Um, I started out with um, the statement by the chief executive officer, Mrs. Maureen Annie, and then I began to talk about um, our efforts to boost information technology and everything and all that and all that, right? It addresses the pain points, no story, fantastic. Then Jumoke, you said, you were actually wondering how my child can beat, you see that, how your child can be the next Zuckerberg. Well, I didn't write this particular copy ad for, for parents that are in their 70s or in their 60s. I wrote this copy ad for parents who are their 30s and their 40s and early 50s who are in tune with what Mark Zuckerberg is doing on Facebook and the meta. So they are thinking, how can my child become the next Mark Zuckerberg? It is by attending that training. All right. It indicated that it was for children. Fantastic. You have to understand that specifics is important when you're writing a copy. If you do not improve specifics, somebody who's reading the copy will not know whether it's for me or whether it's not for me. And that means your copy ad is just watery and um, it doesn't really make sense. Right. So I indicated that it was for children adding value as the next best tech guru. Fantastic. Simple. Pressure says simple and straight to the point. Fantastic. I think the beginning sentence is a catcher to attract the interest of parents. Absolutely. If your beginning sentence does not catch the interest of your audience that you're reaching out to, your copy will not work. That's the truth. It was educative. Fantastic. Copies can be educating. Chigo Chido is a joy, Daniela. Yeah. Copies can be educative. So you are educating them about the problem that you are solving. It was concise. Fantastic. It immediately, I immediately imagined how my child could be the next Mark Zuckerberg. Fantastic. So you see, imagination, imagination. When you're writing a copy, an individual is reading with you. We will look at when we look at copy at four, all right. Sorry, copy at the um, copy at three, you will now see where the imagination plays a role. The headline, how it becomes imaginative and people begin to imagine with you how their life will be how their children will become the mark zuckerberg and when their children will become the mark zuckerberg how people will be paying attention to them how the child will become the most powerful in the world how he will be appearing before governments and wearing suit and tie and defending what he's doing in meta that's what it is Fantastic. The headline was very catchy. Amani Momo. Fantastic. It is descriptive copy that is easy to understand. Celestina. Now you see from all these things that you guys are dropping here, now you understand how what elements that can make up your copy. It's very, very important. It's by practice. You have to practice and practice. That's why I sent that thing. I didn't just want to come in today. Um, I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to come today to just to teach you this, show you slides and everything. I want you to hold this in your hand and this thing will be practical and you guys are participating. There was a call to action at the end though. Fantastic. So you see that there's a call to action. So you have read copy two. These are the things that you guys have observed. Fantastic, right? So now let's go to copy three. Let's go to copy at three. Let's go to copy at three and we begin to look at the elements, the things that make up a good copy, all right? As I also copy at three, the things that make up a good copy. Now, if you look at the copy ad number three, you find in capital letters. If you notice that, if you notice that it was written in, did you guys notice that? If you notice that, say yes for me. Copy at three. Copy at three. You notice that it is in B. Yes. What does that signify? If yes, you write yes, something, sir. if you write something in capital letters, it shows that you are screaming. <laughs> screaming is to catch attention. Have you guys noticed that wherever you're living in your city, wherever it is, you're you are walking on the street, somebody just screams your name. Tiwa! Will you not turn out? Will you not turn or not? You will definitely turn. Or somebody sees screams on the road. Jamaka! Or Amani! Or Lucy Dubisi! They will just shout it on the road. And then you will definitely turn compared to when they will now say, Chamaka. It's like they are whispering. But that is what using capital letters signify. I am shouting, I'm screaming. You see, do not urinate here. <laughs> it sounds like a threat. Precious. You see that these things are things that you see normally on a daily, daily everyday activity. Remember that I said you have to be intentional. You have to be in the moment. We are good observers 
observing the elements of the universe that helps us to relate to human beings. Are you noticing how these things that we see normally in our daily lives, how they are played out? So, for example, you see, do not urinate here. They are always writing it in capital. Go and check in your neighborhood as you move around. All those walls where they say do not urinate here or do not sell this land or keep off. Check. They don't really usually write it in small letters. They write it in bold capital letters. Keep off. Do not urinate here. You will, pay, you will pay a penalty if you urinate here. You've noticed it. It means that I want to scream at you. Beware exactly at the back. I want to scream at you so that you pay attention. So for me, danger zone, fantastic. So you guys are seeing that these are real everyday applications as we move around in our street in our daily in our street and for our daily activities you see these things all around us so for this particular copy ad i wanted to scream so that you pay attention and you see what i'm about to tell you can make you two million in the next 60 days if do you notice it what i'm about to tell you can make you two million in the next 60 days if because i'm shouting at you i want you to pay attention and pay attention to something that will make you two million in the next 60 days if you Pay keen attention. You see? Then it moves from screaming. The next sentence you see, if you pay keen attention. Now that I have screamed, for example, if somebody screams your name and you pay attention, they're no longer screaming anymore. Their voice will now come down to begin to tell you what it is that they want to tell you. <laughs> Guys, are you seeing how these things are working? All right? Hook them. So the moment I scream your name, you pay attention to me, and then I'll start telling you what I want to tell you. Then I don't need to shout anymore. You have got, I've gotten your attention. Then I'll say, I start telling you what I want to say. All right. So you see, then I began to write. I began to write. Let me now tell you about the um, that particular um, opening sentence, the header. The header raises anticipation to know how. So somebody tells you, I want to tell you how you can make two million. The next thing you are thinking in your brain is, how will this be possible in 60 days? The next thing, it is that sentence is prepping blessing collapse you are sending me direct message i think you should be sending to everybody so that everybody will be reading what it is that you're writing if you send to me directly um i may not blessing you i think you are sending to me um change your stuff to send to everyone so everybody can read what it is you're writing okay so um now that sentence raises anticipation for the individual to know how he can make the two million it, it's prepping them to want to continue to read. I'm waiting this guy won't talk now. What is he going to tell me about making two million? It is catchy. It catches attention because I screamed at you. Catches attention. The next thing is that it raises your curiosity. You see? So let's say now you're saying, yes, because I was wondering how it would be possible to make two million in 60 days. Some people will make one million in, in, in two days, actually. But this one was a copy I wrote. Remember I said to you, I was able to make this two million. Remember I said to you, do not fake it, do not lie. So I wrote a copy that was in alignment with my, my results at the time. You get to these days, I can do, I have done 2.2 million in seven days. So I can write a copy that says that you can make 2.2 million in seven days. And I can tell you how I did it. All right. But that particular time I wrote this copy, it was for 60 days. I did that to me um, in less than 60 days. So I was basing on my reality per time to write that copy. All right. Remember I said, don't, when you write copy, don't tell lies, don't falsify claims and everything. That's example of what it is I'm sharing with you. Now, um, it draws in the reader. So write these things down. Your, your headline, the headline of your copy must raise anticipation. Number two, it, was, it must prep somebody to want to continue to read. Number three, it has to be catchy. Number four, it raises curiosity. Number five, it draws in the reader. Somebody can write down for me in the comment section so that everyone individual can read, right? Number one is that it raises anticipation to know how. Number two is that it preps you to continue. Number three is that it is catchy. Number four is that it raises curiosity. We are curious to know what it is, what next. And number five, it draws in the reader. So the reader must be drawn in to begin to read your story, to begin to read your copy, to read the body of your copy, and without um, stopping until they get to the point where you're pitching something to them. Okay? 
Now for headers, um, for headers, fantastic, precious. Thank you very much. You've written it, raises anticipation, preps you to continue, catchy, raises curiosity, and draws in the reader. God bless you, precious. Okay, so um, when it comes to read, for when it comes to headlines, you can use this um, these four things that I want to share with you um, for your headline. Number one is you can use a question for your headline. Do you know that? Have you heard that? Do you know that you can make two million in sixty days without actually boom boom boom? Have you heard? that in the city of America, two people are shot every day on the streets. Have you heard that in Nigeria, Abado and cassava is what a politician is telling us that we'll be eating every day of our lives? Something like that. The moment you share, <laughs> people are laughing. The moment you share that, right? The moment you share that, people will want to pay attention to you, all right? The moment you share that, do you know in Nigeria, that by eating cassava and abado, a politician says we will become, do you know that the politician in Nigeria wants to recruit 50 million people into the military and give them cassava and abado? Something like that. The moment you share something like that. <laughs> the back is off my, off my mic. <laughs> well, I just wanted you guys to laugh, you know. So by your headlines, number one is questioning, right? <laughs> Blue speaker. <laughs> All right, all right. So some people use clickbait in the in the most. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Precious, I like that. Do you know that your politicians see the youth as militants? Yeah. Well, these are examples, but I I I know you guys have got the the jack of what it is that I'm sharing, right? So you can start out with a question. So for example, when it has to do with business, you you, you can say something like, "Do you know that one in every two businesses die every year?" You know, maybe maybe you want to write a copy that has, you know, sell something about how people can build their businesses. So when you start out with that question, do you know that one in every two businesses die in Nigeria in the first year? Something like that. You know, an individual says, oh, my God, I'm running a business. I don't want it to die. What is this person trying to tell to tell me right now? And then <laughs> she doesn't say louder. <laughs> All right. So, um so they, pay, they read it. I'm like, oh, I don't want my business to die. Well, let me know what this guy is saying now so that my business cannot die. So question is a good way to start out with your header. Then number two, statistics. I already mentioned it. Statistics could be one in every two business die in Nigeria in the first two years. That is statistic. So you quote a statistic, a startling statistic. It must be startling that will make somebody pay attention. So if you are doing maybe something in health, you can say, do you know that one in, in every five persons have the HIV in, for example, in those states. I'm not saying it's correct, though. I'm just saying if you find a statistic, right? Do you know that one in every five persons is HIV positive in a dose state? So therefore, something like that, you get? So you start out with a startling headline. that will make people um, to pay. Attention. Please, if you are from a dose state, this is not um, in any way to demean you. I'm just doing an example, okay? Please don't don't quote me on on Facebook and say popular thought leader said that those people have HIV. Please, all right. So, um, question. As I said, question. Statistics. Number one, uh, the third one is a shocker. All right, shocker. So you can shock. I, I I mean, I use that one a lot. I shock people a lot with my headlines. All right. There was one I wrote one particular time. How the penis needs the vagina how the penis needs the vagina. When I just wrote that thing, come and see the open rate in my email that day was just going up and up and up. How the penis needs the vagina. You know, people like those kind of gist. They just, you know, see, when it comes to, I know that you may not be able to do these copies um, when you're running Facebook ads, um, but when it comes to writing startling headlines, so headlines, you see, one is religion. Number two, one is religion. Secondly, is sex. When you use religion, when you use sex, when you use politics, these three, these things, these things that people are always having, have relationship. So relationship, sex, politi politics, and um, and yeah, sex, politics, relationship, and religion. These two things we make people to want to open. Even born again people, they want to read erotic gist. 
And then when they're reading the erotic gist, they say, oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. But they're still reading the erotic gist too. After reading it, they will now say, oh, God, thank you for my mind. Um, I, 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 I release my mind from the clutches of the, the enemy. But they have read it. That's the truth. They have read it. Even though they are born again, they have read it. So, um, so listen, I saw Ellen, I says, how to become an influencer without having followers. And also, give. <laughs> I don't know how that one works. But then some, if you are going to use headlines, please make sure that your headlines are not just unnecessary clickbaits. Make sure that your headlines are not unnecessary clickbaits so that people are now clicking your headline and they, when they click it, the body of your, your copy is utterly, utterly different from what your headline is talking about. You get what I mean? People may click it the first time, click the second time, and they may the third time that you're running or uh, putting something, they may not click because they know that your clickbait is just that. I mean, there, there, there are some certain sites and uh, when you read their clickbaits, they're like, okay, for example, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Ronaldo says he wants to leave Man United. You, you, you now say, oh man, my Ronaldo wants to leave. You now click. You now, and when you now enter there, they don't say, Ronaldo wants to leave United except if they pay him Meanwhile, he was not actually leaving. You know, it's just a clickbait that doesn't really connect. So your irrelevant clickbait will make you lose your audience trust. All right? It must be in line with what it is that your copy is all about. So don't go and write an irrelevant clickbait and people just click it because you just want to bring them in. And then, I mean, I see a lot of newspapers all these Insta blog, blog, bloggers, you know, when you now read the, when you now click and enter, you find out it's totally rubbish, not even connected to what um, the headline was saying. Okay. So, um, question. So, you can write down in the comment section question, statistics, shocker, and curiosity. Like this particular one now that I use, what I'm about to tell you right now can make you $2 million. That is a That is a curiosity headline. All right. So, question. Statistics, shocker, and curiosity, all right? Use a question, startling statistics, shocker, religion, sex, relationship, or politics. Number four is curiosity headline, all right? So we need to realize that these are the things that um, you can you can utilize when you want to write your, 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 your headlines, all right? So let's now begin to dive into the body of your copy, all right? So we are still looking at copy ad three. You find out that a good copy starts with a good, you don't get curiosity. Yeah, the curiosity there. You know, I said, what I'm about to tell you can make you 2 million in the next 60 days. It's curiosity because you want to be curious about how can you make this 2 million, right? So curiosity, you want to be curious. I mean, steer the curiosity, make the individual to want to yearn for more, right? That's the curiosity part of headlines, okay? So I said for the body of your copy, if you look at copy at three, copy at three starts with the heading, right? So your copy must start with the heading. Your copy must start with the heading. And as I said, your heading must be relatable, must be simple, must be, um, must re raise curiosity, must draw in the reader and prep them to continue and kick, you know, raise anticipation to know the next thing. These are the these are the things you have to know about read about the header. We've talked about header extensively. Um, the next thing is a little preamble, all right? A little preamble, background, or background story stating the problems. Okay, a little preamble of your background stating the problems. So if you look at copy R three, I was able to state a little bit of background, all right? A little bit of background, and then I stated the problems. All right. So you can do a little bit of preamble background stating the problems that your solution will eventually want to solve. It's important that you understand that. The next thing is benefits, benefits, benefits. These are part, if you look at copy at three, you will find out that I, I started talking about the benefits, but before you read two, you know, I think the, let me see the, the paragraph, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in paragraph eight, I began to talk about the um, the benefits. So I talked about five benefits initially. So I talked about three benefits initially, but before you read what the deal is, here's what the book will show you. So I did number one, number two, number three benefits. And then I wrote again, there is much more. 
the thing is that this is how human beings are. Human beings want a whole lot more for less. So when I now say there is much more, they are now anticipating, oh, there is so much more, all right? See, the language is very important when you're writing your copy. Remember yesterday I talked about the elements of the universe that, have, that make us to deepen our connections with other human beings. Language is one of those elements, language. So you see, there is much more. Then I now did another four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven benefits. So I'm saying here, if you want to write benefits, at least do at least five benefits of what it is that you are placing, they are offering people. At least five benefits. When I do my when I do my landing pages or I'm making an offer, I write as many benefits as possible. But when you're writing your copy, at least five is okay. But if you can do up to eight, ten, fantastic, phenomenal. So benefits. So you read the person you write the write out the benefits of the offer that people um, that you're reaching out that the people are going to gain when they connect with your um, with your offer that you're offering. Then you can now state bonuses. You know bonuses are also extras. So bonuses are extras. Bonuses can come from some other things that you've done before, existing courses that you have, existing eBooks that you have, something extra. Bonus can even be um, that they are doing this training with you, or if they buy this, you're going to give them um, a free consultation, or if they buy this, you're going to give them that. You know, benefits, I mean, bonuses, which are the extras that they will gain by buying the product. So I said heading, a little preamble, benefits and bonuses the next thing is the guarantee right the guarantee what is the guarantee that they will have if they buy your offer all right people want to be assured they want to be made assured that if i buy this offer now if i spend my money and buy this what is the guarantee that i will what is the guarantee that i will get the results that i'm seeking for so you have to be able to create your own guarantees but make your guarantees very make your guarantees believable and make your guarantees realistic all right make your guarantees believable make your guarantees realistic then another thing i want to share with regards to guarantees is that you have to be careful when you're making certain guarantees i see some individuals they will say something like if you buy this product and if it doesn't give you what you're looking for i will refund you and i will refund you your money hmm. that is a very open statement though very open statement you will be shocked that you have created a video training, for example, a video training of say 10 videos that will last say 10 hours or 16 hours to watch those videos. Somebody who is criminally minded will buy the course. Say you have done that course for say, let's say 50K, all right? In your landing page, your guarantee is that if you watch this video and you don't get value from it, remember, see how, how you said it. If you watch these videos, and you don't get value from it, I will refund you your money. It is open statement. Hey, somebody will buy that thing for 50K and spend the entire day, one day only, watching all the videos, learning something from all the videos and coming back to you to tell you that he didn't get value. Hey, I'm telling you the truth. Because your guarantee said it and it's open-ended, the person is liable to collect his 50K back from you. I mean, I've seen things on this journey. So what people do with terms of guarantee, some of them put a deadline for the guarantee. They'll tell you that if you buy this course, or if you buy this training, and you don't get this kind of results, for example, you don't make, you don't make let's say, um, up to, if you don't make 10,000 that at least in the next 12 months, then I can, I, can, I will um, refund you with evidence that you did not make it. You get what I mean? Yes, at the back end, there are many of them. Oh, there are plenty. I mean, there are, so that's why with guarantees, we are very serious. We are very, I mean, there's a way you have to do your guarantee that does not rope you in and deal with you negatively. So we say something like, if you buy this course and the next one year, you're not able to make 10,000 naira, I will grant, I will refund you when you show evidence that you were not able to make up to 10,000 naira. <laughs> so first and foremost one year is 365 days before the person don't wait 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 to to collect the money could not tire then he has to provide the evidence also 
that he could not be able to make 10,000 naira after watching all the things that you have taught. So they give up in a way. Do you get? So because we have seen things, people who, I mean, I will refund you and I also apologize to you. What are we doing with your apology? Your apology is nothing to us. Haven't you seen people, um, haven't you seen big ministers, big uh, pastors who commit uh, adultery and then they will come and do one flimsy, flimsy apologies. The next day, everybody faces their business. What's, what's, what, what will we chop with the apology? You get what I mean? And I will refund you and also apologize to you. Man, that's about the dash. It doesn't really work anything. How many people you want to apologize to? You get what I mean? Or you come and write one long post on Facebook and that's it. Meanwhile, so in doing your guarantees, you have to be very careful and understand the, the boundaries within which you can do your, um, your refund or you know any other thing that you've proven to want to give. The next thing is the call to action. So that's about the final element there when it has to do with writing your copy call to action so you put in the call to action and connected to call to action i usually like to use fear of missing out fear of missing out for example people who follow me um, for my current training now ebook money i've already started writing on my timeline 20 people have paid and actually 20 people have paid for the course so when people start to see ah 20 people have paid do ah what am i doing here they will now go and, and pay then if you watch, if you watch in that copy, all right, if you watch in that copy, copy at three, you, I don't know if I used, um, yeah, I used, I used a fear of missing out. So if you look down, down, you see that only 1,499 Naira for the next 24 hours. And please, if you say something, mean it. All right, if you say something, mean it. So if you say something that you are going to, you are going, I mean, I see landing pages, they say 24 hours. I go back again after 24 hours. The landing page is still the same thing, the same price. It hasn't changed. There's one lady, there's a friend of mine that I love. She doesn't joke with her. She doesn't joke with her fear of missing out. All right. Temi, Temi is my friend. Temi Ajibawa. If Temi tells you that her training will change price after 72 hours, if you are going back to that particular website, it has changed the price. It makes people understand that this woman knows what she's doing. She is, um, she is. When she tells you, you do it. So that next time, when she was making another offer, and you see her offer, and you know that the last time you wasted time and you didn't buy the offer, and everything changed, you will take you. You will do everything possible to be able to get that offer. So fear of missing out. Deadline is one way to make people to want to miss out. Deadline and number. Another person that uses number that I know is Tisha Bees. So Tisha Bees will tell you that one, once we get to 1,000 people, the price will change. Our own is not um, about time. Our own is about the number of people who took the offer. So everybody will be scrambling to be within the number. And the moment she has, I don't know the kind of website she uses and all that, the moment that timer she has or the thing that records the number of payments clicks 1,000, all right, clicks 1,000, boom. It changes price automatically. Victor, can we still get the same offer? No, the offer, this is it the offer on the copy at three? No, it's gone. It was an offer I made many years. I think it was last year or something. The offer is gone. So, no, I'm not making the offer anymore. So, <laughs> if you want to just get the book, you can get the book for 1000 now, but the offer is completely gone. Okay, so um, Trisha B uses um, number of people who have bought. So, if, you, if she says 1000 people, and when she gets to 1,000 people, the, the counter just changes the price automatically and you're not uh, part of it, okay? Victor, um, if you want to buy it, it's called, called uh, it's, it's, um, I don't know, what's the name of the book again that I was offering at the time? Yeah, How to Blow on Social Media. It's on my e-commerce store. If you go to my e-commerce store, you can find How to Blow on Social Media there. I think it's 1,000 there. there. Just buy it. It's a PDF. Buy it. It downloads to your system and you can enjoy. So, guys, Let's do a wrap on these elements, all right? So I think Uchi has done it. Little background stating the problem. Benefits, right? At least five bonuses that they will, extra, uh, that they will gain. Guarantee, be careful of the offer. You better put out the de deadline, call to action that is mixed with, um, that is mixed with um, um, fear of missing out. Oh, okay, at the back end. And then I can don't share the book to anybody. Let them go by. And this is what I want to tell everybody here. 
if you buy a book that is PDF, please do not share it with people. Don't share, especially if the author of the book says that the book is a paid book. Don't share because you are making the owner of the book to lose money, okay? So it's important not to share, all right? Go make the people to go buy their, their own. So if you want the link, we can give you the link, okay? So um, the next thing I want to do as we wrap up is copy ad number four. Copy ad number four, there's a strategy that I utilize in copy ad number four that I call interlocking detail. I call it interlocking detail. Copy ad number four, interlocking detail. So if you read it, you find out 20 content ideas for real estate agents. 20 content ideas for real estate agents. You find out that as you start reading that particular, um, as you start reading, maybe I should type the link. I don't know if, um, if you want to buy it. Just copy and paste the links here. People are interested so in just That's the link. I've pasted it. Okay, so anybody who wants to get it. Ah, Nepal has struck now and my degen has gone off. So let me wrap up on um, on this. Interlocking detail. Number 20, 20 content ideas for real estate agents. You find out that after the 11th strategy, I talked about my book tour. If you read that number, if you read the copy ad number four, you find out that after the 11th strategy that I put, put out there, you will see that I inserted the link to my, to my tour. Now, the, the thing is that towards the end, at the end, I said, tag any real estate consultant, realtor, or agent. People began to tag their friends, and people began to share their, that post on social media, on Facebook especially. As they were sharing the post, people reading the post, as they're reading it, they are clicking the link to sign up for the tour. You see the strategy there? I call it interlocking. So I do a very beautiful, powerful post that I know that people will be sharing. Then somewhere in the middle, I, in, I put in a link that they will be clicking to sign up for my course or to go to, um, to sign up for my tour or to buy something. So they don't need to get to the end. They just do it, take that action, okay? So if you look at copy ad number four, you find out that after the 11 strategy I shared there, I used it interlocking. So I think we have seven minutes to go, uh, 7.53. Yesterday, I didn't want, um, we were being hushed to go. So I have one hour, seven minutes to go. So if you've got questions for me, um, please drop your questions. But you see, those things that I sent, the copy ad one, two, three, four that I sent is for you to study them. We've looked at what we've talked about this night. You study them and then begin to replicate. Just begin to try your hands, you know, create as many copies as possible. Keep writing copy, keep writing copy. As you keep writing copy, right, you begin to get better and better at writing copies, right? So that's that's how we keep getting better at writing copies, okay? So please ask the questions um, in my office that I've put up the generator. <laughs> Seems that everybody is going home. So if there are questions now, please ask me so that I can answer before the laptop dries off. So I have, I have. Um, let me put the link. I think I sent it wrongly. Let me put it to everyone. All right, so that's the link, seller.co, H-T-B-O-S-M, all right? Seller.co, out. The power is back. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. So um, the first question, how can we know if the copy we wrote is good? I mean, how can I scale up my copy? Well, you only know if your copy is good if people are buying what you have, what you have done, all right? What you have put in the copy. If your copy is not good, you know that it's not converting. That's the only way to know if your copy is making sense. If people are not buying, that you've written a copy that has to do with the product and you're not getting sales. It means that the copy you wrote may have been faulty. I mean, that's, that's just the only way. How you can scale up your copy is by practice. You have to just keep practicing. You practice and practice and practice. I mean, when I started writing copies, I wasn't so good. You know, my copies were not making sense, but I, as I began to, to, to practice and study and write more copies, I became better at writing copies, okay? Most my headlines, no, your headlines must not be in capital letters, Suzanne. Remember, I gave you guys three, four uh, examples. Copy ad, if you look at copy ad number one, it did not start with 
um, capital letters now. It did not. It depends on what it is that you want, your objective. Like for example, for that particular copy that I was in capital letters, I wanted people to pay attention. I, so I screamed. Do you get? It was more. It was more uh, about screaming. But the copy at one, which I wrote about uh, condolence visit, it's more like a sober, sober thing. I'm talking about death here, so I don't need to scream. So I came in from a sober perspective. All right. Also detailing something that people are used to: the condolence visit to my friend's house and all that. You know. So. That's how I that's how I went in for that one, right? I was a bit more sober when I started the copy ad. Okay, so you have your headlines must not be in capital letters. Please, what is the essence of copywriting? I came in done it. Yeah, but Chiwe, the essence of copywriting here, I said it yesterday. You know, it's for people to fall in love with your brand, for people to trust your brand, and then for you to sell. That's the essence of copywriting. The essence of copywriting is persuasion, to persuade people to take an action. Action could be to love your brand, to buy from your brand, to spread word, you know, persuading individuals. That's the essence of persuasion. Now, um, Chodo, you're asking 1499. <laughs> well, you know, there's something about this in the brain. If you go to ShopRite, for those of you, if you go to ShopRite, you find out that the prices in ShopRite are never exact prices. Haven't you noticed it? If it's something is 1,000 naira, they'll write 999.99. It's a re they are playing games with your mind. They are playing games with your mind. That's what it is. They are playing games with your mind. So in your mind, you're like, mm, you know, reach for, you know, reach one five is less than one five. So you are thinking that you're not spending too much. That's what you are thinking. You are thinking in your mind that you're not spending too much. So if you put it one five, somebody ah, it's the exact number. It's too expensive ah. But when you now put one four nine nine, and even the one four nine nine is a bit confusing. So one four nine nine. You know, and the individual ah, it's 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 small. It's not it's not it's not big. It's not, and then they just easily give you the money. It's just playing with your mind, playing with your brain. That's what it is. How do we write a landing page? Ah, you're not writing a landing page. You're writing a copy for a landing page. A landing page consists of a copy. That's what you read. For example, if you go now and click this thing I sent you, seller.co slash htbosm. What you see is what is called the landing page. On that landing page is the copy that you have written. So you place a copy on the landing page. That's what it is. You're not writing a landing page. You're writing a copy that is placed on a landing page. That's what it is. Okay. Thank you very much. My question is, can a copy be written without an aim to sell? Of course. Of course. Most of some of the copies I sell, I do is not just for to sell. Like, for example, there's a company that is paying me money tomorrow. They are not to sell. They just want me to, to, to create awareness. So I'm not, I'm not selling. I'm not selling for them. I'm going to use the power of storytelling to create an awareness for the company. So they are paying me for that, to create an awareness. But I'm not selling anything, just an awareness. That's what it is, to drive um, this thing in their direction. That's what it is. Um, Facebook hides our sales copy. I don't know what you mean by Facebook hiding your sales copy. Can you explain what that thing means? Can you explain what that thing? Copywriter is not the same thing as a content writer, but a content writer can become a copywriter. A copywriter is a content writer, but a content writer does not necessarily become a copywriter, except a content writer decides to learn the art of copywriting. For example, you know your comedians, you know your, uh, what we'll call their names. Um, um, ah, I'm trying to remember all these comedians. I don't really watch all their skits, so I really don't know. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember their name. Oh, this these kids guys that you know now. Uh, what's their name? Macaroni them. All those things that they are doing is content, but is that copywriting? It's not copywriting. It's co something to make you laugh. Zazuze is a content creator. All that thing is doing. Zazuze. That's content, but is, is he a copywriter? No. You have to learn a content writer to become a copywriter. You have to learn the art of persuasive content writing by understanding the elements and all these things that I shared with you regarding the content writing.